Hello, I'm Aaron Truss. I'm the director of Paradolia, The Rob Knox Story, and the producer of Cult of VHS. What I'm about to tell you is the most interesting thing you'll hear all day. Stick around. I wanted to be a storyteller when I saw Batman 89 on VHS, and it absolutely blew my mind, and I thought, I want to do something like that. And I remember ever since watching that film, I would go away and I would illustrate Jack Nicholson and Michael Keaton as Batman and I'd storyboard. I didn't even know I was storyboarding, but I was actually recreating scenes with my felt tips, my crayons and whatever. And it wasn't until a little bit later I, I, I realized that you could film stuff at home and my mum, my granddads, they all had video cameras and I think that's when it really started. So thank you, Batman. I think I must have been around six or seven and uh, one of my first attempts was at being James Bond where I'm clinging to a side of a train but it's my bunk bed and I got my mate Ryan to put tin foil in his mouth because he was Jaws and I just remember his mouth full of blood by the end of it and <laughs> what have you done to me? I was like, you're Jaws, don't, don't cry, you're Jaws. So that was kind of my first attempt into uh, filmmaking and then it was either action figures or convincing school friends to put on a wig and play fight somewhere down an alley in Greenwich or whatever and, and here we are all these years later. Cucumber Films started in 2018. Colin Knox, uh, who is the father of one of my closest friends who unfortunately was murdered in a knife attack. And his son was in Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. And his father wanted to create a documentary about his life and something just snapped. And I thought, if I was gonna make a feature film, why don't I make a film about someone who I miss and love very dearly? And I spoke to a lot of friends of mine, Joe Akers, Adam Brown, and we sort of just decided, let's make our own production team. We thought, oh, what's a good name? And unfortunately, we ended up with Cucumber, which is the worst bloody name for a production team ever, but it actually does stem from a little joke that we had with Rob when he was alive. There's a film that we did called Employee of the Dead where Rob plays this store manager who's a zombie because he ate some bad beef. And Joe is one of the characters who's trying to get out of the store because it's a night shift, but he's only armed with a cucumber in his pocket. There was a line where he's trapped in the lift door and Rob's attacking him and Todd Stammers plays this character called Dylan and says, Cucumber. So we just use the cucumber. That's why we call cucumber films. It's just one of those days, isn't it? <laughs> so cucumber films is a group of young, enthusiastic, talented people who work in audio, GFX, tech, and we decided to make our own stories. We'd go away, form our own production team not working for anyone, but just for ourselves, just to tell stories. Um, we're all wearing white bands um, to commemorate Rob Knox. Um, he was stabbed uh, last year, and um, it's just a memory of him, really, just so that he knows that we're thinking of him. I think the, the cast and the crew did uh, did their best, really, to rally and, and hopefully represent for Rob, even though he couldn't be there. So Cucumber's first film was the Rob Knox story, and that's probably one of my proudest achievements, especially within the team of Cucumber. And due to the sensitivity of the film, everyone who worked on the film, be it the talent or Cucumber, we decided to waive our fee and give all the money that would come in, remuneration, royalties, all to knife crime charity, the Rob Knox Foundation. We got to work with Ray Winston, Jim Broadbent, and we got to find out all these stories about Rob that we never knew about, and that's very special to me. And the fact that it was picked up by Woodcut International was probably one of the best days of my life, simply because Woodcut were able to take what we did at Cucumber even further around the world. The Rob Knox story is currently showing on ITVX in the UK. It's currently showing on Sky Germany. It's now also going to be on BBC America. It's also going to be in Hong Kong and Hungary and the list keeps growing. And it's amazing that that all came together with just a handful of people. And I thought if we had more people, what could we create? Don't worry about it. I mean, don't be intimidated. I mean, Jeff was pretty much the greatest actor there ever was, in my opinion. I mean, he's up there with Judy Dench, Leslie Grantham. He was up there. I mean, 
The guy knew how to make an entrance. The Understudy. It's a short ghost film that we filmed in a, an old theatre in Bromley, the Bromley Little Theatre. We went away and in 48 hours we wrote a script, storyboarded and went straight to filming and that was The Understudy. It was just something for us, but that would eventually prick the ears and eyes of a certain Stuart Morris at Misty Moon. I'll get to that later. The next film that Cucumber worked on was a co-venture, which was Cult of VHS, which was a nostalgia documentary looking back at the time of VHS, the video nasties, but also at the collectors of today. And there are some wonderful people in Cult of VHS as well. I mean, you've got David Gregory from Severin Films, you've got Graham Humphreys, and you've got Kevin Martin as well, who's just this insane video shop owner in Canada, in Edmonton. The film got itself into Fright Fest, which was another proud accomplishment, was to take this am amazing documentary by uh, Rob and Geraldo Preciado and put it on the big screen at Leicester Square. Oh, totally. I, I, I don't want to seem naive in saying this, but I think every film here at Fright Fest owes something to the VHS culture. You know, we have to give thanks to, you know, all the films that we saw, Night of the Living Dead, Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday 13th. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't sitting downstairs in the front room where our parents were asleep with the volume on two or one, try not to wake them up, watching films we shouldn't be watching. And now here we are at a festival celebrating all things horror and we're all filmmakers or fans. And more than that, we're a community now, and that's incredible. That was another inkling where I thought, okay, Cucumber's onto something here. We've tapped into something which, I, you know, who knows where it's gonna go next. So I was really surprised when Stuart called me up out of the blue and he said to me, I loved your film, The Understudy at the Misty Moon International Film Festival. I have a project coming up that I'd like to do with Diane Franklin. Do you want to direct it? And I thought, wow, Diane Franklin from Bill and Ted and Amityville 2, The Possession. Uh, let me think about that and I'll give you a call back. Oh, probably. You're not sure? It was at a time when a project I was working on had just fallen through about Operation Husky. It was going to be a documentary. And once that fell through, I, I thought, you know what? Let's do some crazy shit. Let's, let's, let's write a ghost story. And of course, Stuart goes, okay, have you got a story? Can you write a script? And I thought, I could, but there's one man I really want to write this script, and that's Aiden Truss, and that is my father. I absolutely love my father's stories. My father is responsible for the novel Gape. It's a phenomenal read. It's one of my favorite books of all time and I'm probably being biased and it has you in hysterics, the imagery, everything. He paints the most wonderful pictures in his stories. And I thought that combined with Diane Franklin will make for one hell of a scary film. So I asked him, I said, do you want to write a script for it? And he kind of just chuckled and went, you all right then? <laughs> As if it was nothing, you know, like, yeah, it's, it's Wednesday, let's do a film with Diane Franklin then. And I thought, okay, let's do this. So working with my dad was, again, another proud moment for me because it's my dad. And like all great ideas, it started in the pub. In fact, I think it ended in the pub. In fact, I think he's still there. <laughs> I remember the day getting a phone call from my dad and saying, I've got a title for you. And he said, it's Paradolia. And he said, it's based on a short story he'd written. I thought, can we nick it? And he went, yeah, of course. So we, we went along with that. And I remember coming up with a treatment for dad, working with him, trying to work out the characters, flesh them out. And eventually we presented it to Stuart and said, this is what we want to do. I remember Stuart's going, oh, wow. So he was, he was really hooked onto it. I think his main concern was, how much is it going to cost? And I thought, don't worry about that yet. <laughs> said, don't worry about finances. We'll burn that bridge down when we get to it. So pareidolia is basically a term for when you look at an inanimate object or you look at clouds in the sky or a knot of wood and you think you can see a face. But what it actually is, is your brain trying to piece things together because you, you tend to try and find imagery and things to make sense of them. We explore the term itself through psychology as this university lecturer from America is taking over this class and she doesn't really know much about the subject, but she does know about pareidolia. And she thinks it's quite fun to explore it with her students. She gets them to take photos and see if they can find pareidolia in you know, the, the garden or, or on their walks or whatever. But on her travels taking photos, she actually disturbs something that she's not meant to. And that was something that got me really excited. Just talking about it now is giving me goosebumps because that was how I was when dad explained the story to me. You know, as soon as we had that script nailed down, it was pretty much over to Stuart 
to see what we could do with finances and it, it was decided it would be a crowdfunder and we'd offer rewards for perks and things like that but the only way that could really happen is if we populated the film with popular actors from TV and film and so that process was a lot of fun it was mainly Stuart who would say I think we should get this person I think we should get this person Joe Akers was probably the only person that I really cast in the film because I insist on having Joe Akers in every bloody project I do because he's a brilliant character actor which is very hard to find in people these days for little money but also he's a very close friend of mine and I love him dearly so of course I'm going to stick him in Paradolia. Did you know for instance that the Victorians believed the last thing the deceased saw was imprinted on their eyes. Of course, there's no basis in fact, but there are hundreds of pictures of dead people's eyes in the archives. I think people are really going to enjoy Paradolia because at the end of the day, it's a stripped down ghost story. It, it's nothing complicated about Paradolia. It's very easy to follow and it plays upon a primal fear that we all have, whether it be of someone watching us or the dark. And that's where Paradolia comes into play. It's a very simple ghost story, my favorite. I was probably the most nervous out of the lot because if something went wrong, Stuart's gonna have a go at me. Or worse, Diane Franklin's gonna have a go at me. And bless the team, they huddled around me. You know, I'd have James Dean, my DOP, come up to me and whisper really random shit in my ear to make me laugh. I'd have Camille making sure that I was fully stocked with cigarettes and coffee, like, you know, trying to kill me, but she was trying to make sure that I was okay. And then we had Felix uh, and Alex, my cousin, who I think I roped him into being a cucumber, and now he's just honorary cucumber. I needed someone to drive, and I needed someone to move lights because I had a hernia, and now he's part of the team. He's a production assistant, and I love that, because now there's family involved, as well as dad. So in post-production, you've got Nacho, who's pretty much did the entire artwork for Paradolia. Anything you see on social media, anything to do with artwork, that's all Nacho. Nacho is also responsible for the ending sequence of the film, which I'm not, I can't really talk about too much. We have Dan Grant, who spent months and months and months and months because he had to create a 3D mold uh, from scratch of Diane for the end sequence of the film. And then you've got Toby and Bethany from Infraviolet who created this amazing soundscape. Uh, Mario Vidali and Dan Yates on audio who put together the greatest sound mix I could have ever asked for and then made a 5-1 for Fright Fest. When you hear that 5-1, it's just so juicy. Like you feel it in your bones. That's how good that audio mix is. I mean, there are thousands of short films that get submitted to Fright Fest you know, every year. So the chances of actually getting in are quite slim. So to find out that we were officially selected for Fright Fest was just an amazing experience. I mean, that's the second time now for me, Fright Fest, to be returning as a director as well. What I wasn't expecting was a four page article in Starburst magazine. That's, that's insane. I think Fright Fest put us on the map. I think that's what really started the whole publicity machine. It's just started to snowball. So I'm wondering where it's gonna go next. Everyone keeps saying to us, that should be a feature, that should be a feature. And I'm going, yeah, not, not a bad idea. But, you know, on the outside, I'm being cool as, you know, a cucumber. But with this, I think we, we had our suspicions confirmed that we were onto something, that we had c captured lightning in a bottle. And I think it was a combination of everything involved. I think it was the whole of us. I think we are like a bit of a family between Stuart and Jan and us as the cucumbers and the actors themselves. The evolution of cucumber, in, in a way, we have different directions that we could go in. So at the moment, we've got Adam Brown, who's currently writing a script at the moment for a short called Same Again. And it's absolutely fantastic. It, it made me laugh in the right places. It's a comedy. Nacho, our VFX guy, he's working on a story himself. He's working on several stories, actually, with his uh, partner, Catty. One project's called Meow. Dan Grant's working on an animation called Bulkhead, and it looks incredible. Ever since Paradolia happened, there's been like a spark where they're inspired to work on their own ideas. They want to direct, they want to do this, they want to do that, and that's, that's what Cucumber's for. It's not everything directed by me. I, that's not what I want. I just want it to be the spark to say, you can do it. If you're in a job that you feel underappreciated in, but you think you have the talent to go out there and leave your mark on the world, then fucking do it. 
damn right do it because if you don't do it, they're not going to do it for you. They're not going to make you feel appreciated. Only you can do that. And who knows, you might inspire someone else. I can actually do this and I can go out and I can actually capture something like lightning in a bottle. There's just so much energy and so much life coming out of the Cucumber team right now that I'm actually terrified to see what they come up with next because obviously I have my projects, but they've got theirs too. So I, I can imagine there being seven Cucumber films out next year all because no one could sit still and that's fucking A. Hi everyone, Aaron Truss from Cucumber Films here. If you enjoyed that, hit the subscribe button or just like us, because we'll just keep making films. It's okay, I'll wait until you've done it. I'm not actually gonna go anywhere, I'm just gonna wait until you've clicked that button.